guess what Anish Giri played in this position against Gugesh D? He played knight g5, sacrificing a piece. But that's not it. After pawn takes, came another stunner. Rook takes e6, sacrificing a rook. And surprisingly enough, Gugesh is lost completely. So let us see how this completely dominating position happened in the second round of the Tata Steel chess tournament between Giri and Gugesh. The game started with b4. Giri was white. Anish played d4. Knight f6, c4, e6, and knight f3. d5, knight c3. So queen's gambit declined. Bishop b4, Rag goes in defense. Bishop g5, h6, takes, takes, and e3. So far quiet. Castles, rook c1. Takes, takes, and c5. Castles, takes, and knight e4. Pushing the queen back and then a3. And then he recaptures. So the play would usually happen on the d4 pawn. The isolated d4 pawn. And rook d8 was immediately played by Gugesh. And now rook c2. This is where Anish Giri starts his interesting idea of completely dominating the position. It might look like a very quiet move. What is the point? After bishop d7, he reroutes it to e2. He's focusing on e6. Bishop c6. Queen c2. And now bishop b6. And here Anish completes his plan with rook e1. He is all ready to play knight g5. Sacrificing everything on g5 and e6. And completely opening up the king. Black cannot bring the knight out here because bishop takes c6. And the bishop would hang. And if you take the pawn, the same thing will happen. Knight g5. Takes and rook takes e6. A similar thing happened in the game. The exact same thing happened in the game actually. He played king h8. Gugesh thought he is safe now. Knight g5 surely cannot be enough because the king is out of the pin from the bishop. The correct move should have been bishop d5. The position was dangerous. He had to play bishop d5 and eliminate some of the play. Bishop takes and rook takes was the correct way to play. But he played king h8 and now came Anish Giri's knight g5. Sacrificing a piece and then sacrificing a rook. The point is after takes, rook takes back. If the queen moves anywhere, d7, f8, knight g5 comes. And the position is unsavable. Black pieces are not developed and the king is a sitting duck over there. So, Gugesh played queen takes rook. But that's not enough because bishop takes. Material-wise, it's a queen against two rooks and a knight. Material-wise, it's better for Gugesh. But the king is completely stuck. And now bishop takes f3, just queen f5. What is the threat? He doesn't want to recapture with the pawn. He is threatening queen h3 mate. So how do you stop it? There is no good way to stop it. If you play bishop h5, just queen g5. Attacking the bishop. And every threat again happens. So Gugesh played bishop b4. Just queen takes. And now rook takes d4. So giving back some material. So right now it is queen against two rooks. That's the situation. But again the problem is the king. Queen f3. Threatening queen h5 checkmate. So pawn g4 was played. And here, queen f8 check. King moves, bishop f5 check. King h6. And here, Anish Giri played, bishop c2, and Gugesh had had enough. The position is horrible. The knight can't develop, and queen f5 is coming. Queen f5 is going to follow up with queen g6 mate, or queen g4, queen h7. So once this happens, it's all over. So bishop c2 also stops the mate on d1. It's a very nice move. He is not even spending a tempo for the h pawn or the g pawn. He is just stopping it by preparing queen f5. So an absolutely immortal game by Anish Giri. Maybe preparation. It all started with this rook c2 move. And after a few moves, the position was just overwhelming. And Gugesh collapsed.